Next guest is sticking with the June cut for now, even after today's CPI report. Joining me now are Matt Hornbach, Global Head of Macro Strategy at Morgan Stanley, Kevin Mon, Chief Investment Officer at Henyon and Walsh. Um, gentlemen, thanks for being with me on set. Matt, I got to go to you first because you, are you still expecting a June rate cut? Well, I think our, our economists would tell you that this data point definitely causes risks to shift towards a cut later in the year, I think, is how they, they're framing it. And so while they're still sticking with that June rate cut, hmm. they do acknowledge that the risks clearly are pointing to a rate cut that is late, starts later in the year. Okay. Kevin, I wonder if you can react to yes. what we're seeing in bond yields, particularly that 10-year that seems to have had an impact on equities. Yeah, I would start by suggesting that the path forward for three rate cuts this year, which the Fed confirmed just a couple weeks ago with their March star plot chart, still exists with one potential rate cut at the end of July. They don't meet in August. They're not going to hike again in September because that might look too political with their last meeting before the election. They come back in November, cut one more time, 25 basis points, and perhaps one final cut of 25 basis points in December, getting us to those 75 basis points in cuts this year. I don't know if that's going to happen, but the path forward still exists. But regardless, I don't know when they're going to cut first, but rates are going to be lower over the next three years. And if rates, yields, and inflation are lower, that creates opportunities in both stocks and bonds, D. Right. Um, but, you know, the Fed is data dependent, right? Even if they factored that in, that could be changing with the latest numbers that we've had. How much weight do you put into these CPI numbers? The preferred metric is PCE, which we get at the end of the month. Do you think that, and we talked about this with Steve, right? Third month in a row kind of makes a trend. Do you think that Fed officials are going to be willing to call this seasonal and think that maybe they can the economy can handle a cut? Well, I think when you look at the underlying data that we got today and its implications for PCE later in the month, I do think that it will cause the Fed to kind of say, look, I mean, this could be a trend. We don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty in the economy. When we look at the underlying data that the Fed likes to look at, this is the core services metric, X housing. This has been accelerating on a six-month mm -hmm. average basis. So, I, I would suggest that they're going to say oh, maybe we need to see another three, four prints before right. we be really get comfortable with the underlying trends here. There's inflation, but the other side of this is the jobs data yes. and the economy, kind of proof that higher rates aren't actually as restrictive as many had thought. So do you think that there's a need to front run and perhaps cut to make sure that we get a soft landing? It's a really difficult question to answer because the Fed is really trying to thread the needle here. I think back to the 1970s, which was the last time the Federal Reserve cut interest rates prior to inflation getting back down to their 2% target. What happened? Inflation return hit double digit levels. Paul Volcker stepped in, raised the Fed funds mm -hmm. target rate to 20%. 20%. We think five and a quarter percent is restrictive. Can you imagine 20%? <laughs> yeah. That killed inflation, but it also brought on a recession. That's what the Fed right. is trying to grapple with right now. That's good perspective. But I want to ask you about the equity reaction, sure. right? Since we saw that 10-year auction, um, markets are at session lows, and they've been pretty resilient so far to rising bond yields. Has the character of the market changed? I don't think so, but I do believe the market's got a bit ahead of themselves this year, pricing in the perfect execution of a soft landing by the Federal Reserve, which I don't think we're at that point just yet. But there are other areas of the equity markets that are going to continue to move higher, regardless of when the Fed cuts interest rates for the first time, such as artificial intelligence. An advisor asked me the other day, what inning are we in the AI boom? And I suggest that we're only in batting practice of a yeah. doubleheader. There's so much more opportunities that lie ahead in data centers and software and hardware and, of course, in semiconductors and chips. Well, I usually sit in San Francisco, so that's very much the message <laughs> there as well. Understood. Um, Matt, I want to ask you, though, um, do the Fed minutes matter as much? We're going to get them in less than an hour. And has there just been so much data and so much Fed speak as well? between that last meeting and where we are now, how much weight should investors put into those minutes? Well, I mean, these minutes obviously were crafted well ahead of the CPI yeah. report. And so I would suggest that the market's going to be more focused on the PPI numbers that we get later this week, the final implications for our PCE report at the end of the month, and ultimately what that may mean for the Fed and its decisions uh, when it goes into the May meeting. And so I think that this minutes will be taken with a fair bit of a fair you know bit of salt there and just people will say you know what let's just focus on PPI tomorrow that's that's right, what they'll right. focus on absolutely